On the front page of the Daily Independent in Nigeria this morning, we're looking at the big story that says 20 trillion naira ways and means model CBN's price stability mandate. And on page 29, we have no government in exile, says IPOB. Military airstrikes kill bandits, warlord, 27 others in Katsina. Pastor arrested with three drums of meth. Let okay. That sink. <laughs> okay. Different ways of, you know, <laughs> being on the same level with the Holy Spirit. He's drumming. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sarah sues Buhari over fines against Daily Trust and others. And if you're not abreast of the story, a certain documentary was broadcasted by... Um, I want, I want to believe that it's uh, it's the broadcast, you know, that that's, uh, the fine was levied against. Red Line Train Project Operations to Commence First Quarter of 2023 says, Somolu, at the top of the paper, we have Nigeria's macroeconomic indicators spiraling out of control, says NESG. It says it is inflicting severe hardship on more Nigerians. 2023, obese rising popularity amongst youth worries Atiku Tinubu's camps. Swagger dismisses OB, says social media doesn't win elections. I think this is a conversation we're going to have one day on, uh, on, on this platform. Is it more of social media generated popularity or, you know, the fact that youths are sort of at a point where they're tired and they're re rebelling. Uh, we have two more stories and it's a wrap on the Daily Independent. How Nigerian airlines lose 629.2 billion naira yearly to restricted operations. And final story, something to make us all smile. Toby Amusan makes Commonwealth Games history on page 30. That's really something to be proud of. And congratulations to our girls who are making us proud in sports on the international scene. Absolutely. They made the weekend when Manchester United was breaking hearts left and right. Uh, the Nigerian <laughs> girls, you know, were making, you know, a lot of people proud, including Essay Brumet. She also broke yes. a record, um, the Commonwealth record, I think her own personal record yesterday at 6.99 um, in the long jump. She, phenomenal feat um, by Nigerian female athletes. That's why someone said, who runs the world? And the answer is... Girls. Let's move on to the punch <laughs> newspapers this morning. And it says here, no going back on Buhari's impeachment, says aggrieved lawmakers. You can find those on... Uh, uh, pages uh, two and seven. Also, impeachment threat not withdrawn. Insecurity still persists. Deputy Minority Whip says we will remove Lawan if he blocks Buhari's removal. Oshun Senator insists. And also, APC senators tired of defending Buhari and security says Benue Senator Jeff. Also, UK Museum, we spoke about this, to return 72 looted Benin bronzes. Page 14. Lagos Rail opens 2023 to transport 500,000 daily. Okay. And also soldiers and Amotekun comb forest for Lautech student, uh, students killers. It's pathetic in Yobong labored in vain, says a modded job sister's sister. Sometime last week we also had a conversation about this. Drivers kill women, bystander, hoodlums steal diseased phone. That's on pages four and six. A few others on the punch this morning. Nigeria needs 21 trillion naira to bridge housing deficits, says BOI. And strike. PTA demands federal government ASU parents confab. Also, federal government to implement telecoms, beverage taxes in 2023. Finally, debt servicing to hit 10 trillion naira. Wow. Economists slam federal government. That's on page 27 of the punch newspapers that's quite scary but let's move away from nigeria to tanzania this morning on the citizen the front page of citizen newspaper we have revealed factors behind tourist flow the sharp rise in the number of tourists visiting ngorongoro and other attractions has been attributed to a number of reasons including the lifting of covid restrictions in source markets and impact of the royal tour documentary um so uh we have more stories there and uh joe of course will be taking us through the citizen newspaper all right let's take a look at the citizen newspaper um just as you've started olive already um it's got to do with the tourist attraction there in ngorongoro well the story simply is right before the COVID 19 pandemic uh, there seemed to be a, a low turnout especially of tourists and uh, many have attributed uh, the decisions being made by uh, the president, who definitely is uh, Samia Sulu Hassan, and the fact that tourists are indeed starting to show up. Well, if you take a look at that front page there, there is this documentary that was indeed um, showcased. It's called the Royal Tour Documentary. In that documentary, you'd see why, it lists reasons why um, tourists are starting to indeed flock 
the Ngorongoro um, uh, attraction, the side attractions that also come with it, where you find zebras, wonderful animals, uh, the hilltops are indeed amazing. And why is it the uh, most interesting destination right now in Tanzania? Well, you could read up and find out some more. Besides, you could also plan a trip to Ngorongoro. So we are indeed not just celebrating the fact that tourists uh, it's a tourist attraction and tourists are indeed returning back to that area. Uh, one thing we're also celebrating is the fact that um, Africa has a lot in store amidst the insecurity claims and of course the challenges that Africa also faces. Let's take a look at another story this time. 922,000, some 922,000 tourists visited Tanzania last year, up from 620,000 in 2020 when tourism was uh, ravaged by the COVID-19 pandemic page to has more on that story but let's come down if you take a look at the bottom page there i like the pictures they chose for uh, the kenya <laughs> <laughs> i don't know why they have their hands on their heads but it, it's completely i mean kudos to the editor-in-chief well done good pictures chosen it shows that the countdown is just around the corner by the way it's tomorrow we'll tell you what new central has in store for you but in the meantime Kenyans prepare to vote in tomorrow's polls. Yes, it holds tomorrow. The front runners in the presidential election, William Ruto and Rilo Dinga, wind up their campaigns amid a raging disinformation battle. Meanwhile, Kenyans working and living in Tanzania and northern regions have been tripping back home to vote. And I like that. Let's take one last one. At the bottom left, the Australian firm set for 92 billion shillings graphite project in Tanzania. Wow. Samia Sulu Hassan, indeed. Is, uh, 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 there are a lot of praises also going in for her uh, each and every time. And that's what we get to see every morning here on the front pages, especially from the citizens. Very interesting. And of course, you know, I, I also have to go look at, you know, the figures for people who visit Dubai um, annually and the staggering figures, you know, and yeah. comparing that to 922 for Tanzania. And I think that it can still be pushed up. Joe, what do you think? Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, it still can be pushed up. Remember that Africa, no doubt, has, has come... Uh, um, fourth with a lot of challenges, especially that which has got to do with insecurity. Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic indeed was a huge setback, uh, but uh, guess what? A lot of people would rather go to where they are safe and secure, but we are proud to say that Africa is indeed starting to have that uh, collection of tourists who are indeed returning back and looking forward to explore, most importantly, the culture. I think we, we certainly need to open up to more um, intra-Africa trips. We need to open mm -hmm. more bo our borders to each other. Mm -hmm. But we'll definitely delve more into that conversation. Uh, we're going to quick break. Mm -hmm.